you, Chapul, for inviting me to speak at the India TB Summit. Uh, my topic is uh, uh, TB COVID interactions when dark forces collide. By way of introduction, I need to point out that the impact of a novel viral infection, SARS-CoV-2, on an ancient bacterial disease, TB, is indeed likely to be devastating. It reminds me of what another virus, HIV, did to TB control three decades ago. And in a similar fashion, the effect of SARS-CoV-2, I would guess, is likely to set back global TB control by years, if not decades. These are the two dilemmas. What are the interactions, the synergies, and the impact when these two airborne diseases collide? One, tuberculosis, as old indeed as human civilization, the other, COVID-19, completely unknown till a year ago. And how do high burden countries like India, for example, best navigate the tortuous path between controlling COVID-19 at the same time not neglecting tuberculosis? And as you can see from this cartoon, this virus has really crushed the backs of all aspects of our lives, from the economic to the social to the political, and of course, the medical. Uh, and it has done so for all aspects of TB as well. So it's affected TB exposure, TB infection, the large number of patients with TB disease have been impacted, and those with post-TB fibrosis or residual disability are also greatly impacted by this virus. And look, TB has long been having the distinction of being the world's leading infectious killer. And that title was stripped away from it on April 1st, 2020, less than a year ago, when the daily deaths from COVID for the first time outnumbered the daily deaths from tuberculosis. So TB deaths, which had been static at around 4,000 a day globally every single day, on April 1st were overtaken by COVID-19. And COVID-19 has not looked back, in fact, and the number of deaths per day have continued to outstrip those from tuberculosis. And what really happens when these two large circles or wheels intersect with each other? COVID-19, one year into the pandemic, 85 million annually. Tuberculosis eclipsed with 10 million, which sounded vast enough in terms of numbers. And this intersection between the two is what interests me and is going to be the topic of this talk. This in intersection, which is only going to expand over time as both these wheels keep turning. So how is COVID-19 impacting on TB? Well, there have been delays in the diagnosis of new TB cases and less active case finding. There have been disruptions to medicine production, to medicine transport and supply. There have been stockouts and delays in accessing vital drugs, first and second line. Less staffing for TB because there's more staffing for COVID means reduced care for our TB patients. Reduced support when they have adverse drug reactions, when they have comorbidities which need more, not less attention. There have been delays in receiving financial and nutritional support packages which our TB patients have long been promised. There have been delays and shortfalls in BCG vaccination, so crucial for infants and newborns with tuberculosis, to prevent tuberculosis rather, and interruptions in our HIV programs as well. So what are the affinities between these two diseases? Are patients with TB truly more prone to get COVID? Do they have worse outcomes from COVID when they do get dual infection? Well, this is from the original Wuhan cohort. And they found that infection with TB was a more common comorbidity at 36% than with diabetes, with hypertension, with IHT, and with COPD. And you've long known the link between diabetes and hypertension, for example, and COVID. But now you also know that TB was a considerably higher risk factor for COVID infection. And when they did get covid uh, MTB infection was resulting in more severe COVID, more rapid progression of COVID, poor outcomes, and most worrying of all, latent TB infection may be an independent risk factor for susceptibility to SARS-CoV-2. Think, think of what the impact of this would be in the millions of latently infected 
people that this country currently harbors. And this was a meta-analysis looking at TB, and HIV, TB and HIV and COVID-19. And again, they found that TB with or without HIV was a risk factor for COVID-19 period. And that patients with TB had more severe COVID, had higher mortalities when they did contract COVID and the HIV infection infected were even more vulnerable. So TB, HIV, COVID infected seem to do worst in fact, with even worse outcomes than TB COVID. <clears throat> and intriguingly, fascinatingly, these two diseases share the identical biosocial determinants. We've long known that the commonest biodeterminants of TB are poverty, overcrowding, pollution, and diabetes. Well, surprise, surprise, these are also the commonest biodeterminants of COVID. Uh, and you can see that from this cartoon here. They are shared biosocial determinants, identical to both diseases. And I'm just going to look at one poverty and the poverty trap, because the social and economic consequences of COVID-19 will increase the number of people living in poverty by half a billion. That's easy to understand. So many millions have lost their jobs, their livelihoods because of COVID. And they will be pushed below the poverty line. And the majority of these newly poor people will live in the developing world, Africa, Southeast Asia, India, South America. And poverty in turn will make these new poor then more vulnerable to TB. A vicious circle of poverty impacted on by COVID with an additional 104 million BPL below the poverty line. And this whole group in turn, because of poverty, more vulnerable to tuberculosis. So a complete cycle. And then there are the indirect effects, the effects of the lockdown, this harsh and very rigorous lockdown, which was imposed by President Modi with no notice at all on the country and its consequences. And as this brave economist Jayati Ghosh says, the most destructive effects of COVID-19 in India have not been the result of the disease, but the nature of the government response. The most stringent lockdown in the world destroyed the economy and forced millions into poverty hunger, but did nothing to control virus transmission. So how did the lockdown impact on TB patients? It changed their health-seeking behavior. It disrupted health services, both qualitatively and quantitatively. It delayed diagnosis and notifications of TB. There was less testing, mainly because gene expert machines, which are used to diagnose TB, were now used up to diagnose COVID. There were treatment interruptions as our patients were too scared to leave their houses and lack transport even if they were brave enough to. <clears throat> Medical supplies, drug stockouts, all resulted in interrupted treatment, all of which could have amplified resistance. Increased transmission at home as patients were cooped up in home surroundings. The only good things, if any, from the lockdown were that mask wearing increased, which could only have helped tuberculosis as well. And yes, perhaps there was therefore reduced community transmission of tuberculosis, but not enough to counterbalance all the negatives on this part of the slide. <clears throat> BCG vaccinations dropped precipitously. In April 2020, one million fewer children were vaccinated than that same month one year ago. Isn't that startling? TB notifications dropped sharply in both the public and the private sector. And there were a number of causes for this, both patient and program related. Indeed, TB notification rates dropped about 30% every month in the lockdown. And what does that translate to? 30% reduction in notification equals 3 million more people dying from tuberculosis. Treatment completion rates fell as patients could not keep their visits to the clinic. And as the Global TB report from WHO pointed out, the COVID-19 pandemic is likely to leave a profound and long lasting impact on TB diagnosis and control, leading to an additional 6.3 million cases of TB globally and an additional 1.4 million TB deaths. The brunt of this is going to be felt in our country. With colleagues from across the world, we put together this article in Emerging Infectious Diseases. And we looked at the direct impact in our hospital, at my hospital, a very busy tertiary TB care center. OPD visits fell by two thirds during the lockdown. 
and inpatients fell by two thirds during the lockdown for our TB patients. So clearly they were hiding somewhere and paying the price of this. And the aftershock will be felt over time. These are very clever projections by my friend and colleague Nim from the Imperial Hospital in the UK. And he showed and projected that each month of lockdown in this country would result in an additional 40,000 TB cases annually over the next five years and a total of 151,000 excess TB deaths in this country. Of course, each crisis is an opportunity in disguise and we used telemedicine at this time. We had no other choice really, nor did our patients to reach out to our most difficult cohort of patients, the XDRTB patients on bedaquiline because we did not feel it appropriate to abandon them completely. And we did manage this 30 XDRTB patient cohort on bedaquiline, our most sick patients really, remotely through the lockdown with the help of one of my registrars, Dr. Sharma. We looked at their complaints, their symptoms, drug reactions, adherence. We gave them their prescriptions online, monitored their bedaquiline with ECG monitoring. And surprise enough, after remote management through the lockdown, when we polled these patients, a good 70% said they preferred the convenience of telemedicine, even to direct contact. They did not have to traverse Bombay's horrendous traffic to come to us. So these are my concluding slides. What if we tackle TB like COVID? What if we combined the considerable overlap between these two diseases, merging their detection, their contact tracing and their infection control, destigmatizing the use of masks, by directional screening and active case finding, leverage the lacks of community workers newly deployed to search for COVID to now complement active TB case finding efforts, integrated the use of the testing platform common to both diseases, the gene expert, sped up new drugs, sped up vaccine trials for TB as we did for COVID. We've got 12 currently available vaccines for COVID. We've got about 60 in phase three trials. Yet for tuberculosis, all we've had is an ancient ineffective vaccine, the BCG. And this is my concluding slide from the director of Stop TB who says and reminds us, lest we forget COVID-19 is a wake up call to a health system that was already underfunded, overburdened, poorly staffed, wasteful, and provided care of questionable quality. Without a robust and responsive health system, we can neither hope to eliminate TB, nor weather the COVID-19 storm. Thank you.